The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the lamp of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed him. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you dwelling? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was dwelling, and they dwelled with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Kephas, which is translated Peter. Good morning. Welcome to a short biblical reflection on the Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verses 35 up to 42. I have entitled it, Come and See, the Gospel reading for the second Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year B. The beginning expression, the next day John again was standing, refers to the preceding scene. Now, uh, this uh, gospel uh, reading is just only a part of a longer reading. Uh, John the Baptist, which is making the statement, look, he is the Lamb of God, and consequently to his disciples are leaving him in order to follow Jesus. Then uh, the role of John the Baptist, we can say that is taken up by Andrew, who is indicated now, to his brother Simon Peter, we have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed, or we can also translate it differently, which is translated Christ. Uh, I would like to focus on the central uh, dialogue between Jesus and those disciples. Uh, they are, Jesus is asking them, what are you looking for? And they are answering, where are you dwelling? He tells them, come and see. So they came and saw where he was dwelling, and they dwell with him that day. And there is this particular uh, element, feature, which they remember from that encounter. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon, four o'clock in our time concept. In biblical times, it will be uh, called the ten o'clock. There are crucial two verbs. And therefore, we will see them also in a biblical context, how they are used in the gospel according to John. The one which is translated here in this text as to dwell, and the other one translated as to see. Concerning the first verb, which is in our text translated as to dwell, in the Greek, meno can be translated as to remain, stay, abide, and of course dwell. I just pick up the three uh, references, two of verb and then one of noon. Chapter 6, verse, verse 56. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. Those words are in the Eucharistic uh, discourse of uh, Jesus. In chapter 15, when Jesus says, Remain in me as I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit all by itself unless it remains part of the vine, neither can uh, you uh, unless you remain in me. In the vine uh, you are the branches, and whoever remains in me, uh, with me in him, bears fruit in plenty, for cut off from me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is uh, thrown away like a branch. It withers, the, these branches are collected and thrown on the fire and are burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for whatever you please and, uh, will be, and you will get. And then now the, in chapter 14, verse 23, there is a noun which derives from the same verb, meno. Jesus replied, if anyone loves me, uh, he will obey my teaching. My father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling in him. Those instances which I just quoted stress that it is not just simple staying under the same roof, uh, but this is a particular encounter 
uh, like dwelling together, abiding, uh, that it stresses very strong personal relation as those disciples who just stayed with Jesus uh, and therefore uh, they remember this particular uh, element that it was four o'clock in the afternoon because that encounter, personal encounter uh, with Jesus with whom they um, uh, enter in a particular uh, relationship and uh, make an impression on them. And now let us see the other verb. To see orao occurs several times. I just chose also a few instances. Chapter 4, verse 29. Uh, the Samaritan woman tells to, his, to her people, Come and see a man who has told me everything I have done. Could this be a, the Christ? So she expresses her faith in a question because this verb in those instances which I pick up stress or on one, and, one hand faith or lack of faith. For example, the two following stress this lack of faith. Chapter 6, verse 36. But I said to you that you may have seen me and yet you do not believe. Or chapter 14, verse 9, when Jesus tells Philip, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Now, switching to chapter 20, verses 25, 29, the famous story of Thomas, uh, who after resurrection is doubting in uh, Jesus' resurrection, so the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the marks of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my sight. Do not doubt, but believe. Uh, Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have come to believe. And um, the particular instance is in chapter 20, verse 8, it is the story when the two disciples, St. Peter and John the Evangelist, the Apostle, are running to the tomb, and now it refers concerning John. When the other disciples who had reached the tomb first also went in, he saw and he believed. That particular uh, uh, expression that he saw and he believed, his way of looking uh, at the facts, because we have also here to take into consideration biblical anthropology that the seed responsible for both knowledge, uh, feelings, all particular actions, intellectual actions, uh, recognition is the heart. So he saw not with his mind or eyes only, but he saw with his heart, therefore he believed. Summing up. This encounter with Jesus makes so strong impression on them, those disciples. Therefore, they remember this detail that it was four o'clock in the afternoon, our concept of time, in biblical times, it was 10 o'clock. And uh, it was not just simple staying with him, but entering in uh, with him in a strong personal relation uh, similar to that as when John the evangelist, the apostle, entered into the tomb, he believed. So they entered where Jesus was staying, dwelling, and therefore, consequently, they remained with him. They became his disciples. And uh, we can also translate it to our encounter uh, with Jesus in any setting, especially in a church, or even going more deeper in liturgical celebrations and in particular in the Eucharistic uh, setup, in the Eucharistic presence. I would like to wish you a nice day 
a nice reflection on this gospel reading. God bless you.